uh, first agenda item, which is the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Yeah, we don't have the package. It's going to be right. Uh, can we start with town manager update? What's on there? The first one. This one, because I still got to get logged into the computer. Oh, we have three A department uh, board updates. Uh, first item being Grove Street Bridge, ARPA. All right. Uh, commitment. All right. Let's do that. Uh, so for the for the board, we do have uh, TPW director Dennis Westgate on uh, the call as well. Uh, this item's on the agenda uh, as a follow up to last week last meeting uh, where the board discussed uh, and had a presentation from Wes and Sampson on the the design and reviewed the estimated cost for the Grove Street Bridge. Uh, during that meeting, we identified um, the additional costs that were associated with some of the uh, the design work that the engineer consultant was doing, as well as uh, potential lighting for the bridge, recognizing that it's uh, within uh, the Upton Town Center, an area that uh, we are focusing our economic development and um, revitalization efforts. Uh, as part of that conversation, we had discussed um, using uh, 575,000 from our ARPA allocation, but what we did not do is actually vote to officially do that. So place this on the agenda in order to have that uh, vote since to use that funding, all we need is a uh, board vote for authorization. Okay, questions? No, I know the increase, the prices of yeah, I mean, it's the same. We've talked about this bridge yeah. off and on now for coming up on a year. Um, you know, my biggest issue with this particular expenditure is, you know, I'm not in favor of putting up a footbridge that's going to lead onto private property. Um, I've always anticipated this to be one bridge with a footpath or more or less a, you know, sidewalk built onto the side of the bridge is how I envision this happening. There's just too many things, in my opinion, long term that could go wrong to have as a separate bridge. So the way this is presented, I would be a no on this. Mm -hmm. this. This is um, just to be sure, I, I absolutely understand what you're saying. And I think that was clear last time. This is just about the use of ARPA money for the bridge, right? Which okay. will therefore increase the the total cost of the bridge to just under 2.4 million, right? We've allocated uh, through warrant articles. Yeah, uh, well, with this, it went because we were 400,000 in engineering, 133 in construction. Oh, that gets to yeah. 177. Let, let, can we yes. run through the numbers again? Correct. And, and, um, and, and we do have Dennis. Yes. On, um, so or if you want to do a job. Uh, so town meeting, uh, May 2022, had appropriated for uh, 400,000 for engineering. There was discussion on town meeting floor to try to reduce that. Uh, Dennis Westgate working with uh, and with getting some quotes from engineers was able to have that engineering work done for 290, um, leaving uh, $110,000 left over from that for additional engineering work. Uh, town meeting then authorized 1.3 at the special town meeting in November. And um, so, uh, yes, you have a 400 plus a 1.3. That brings you 1.7. Um, when, you, when you're talking about at our last meeting and you had the projected cost, you had a uh, estimated cost of uh, 1.9. However, within that was $100,000 that they identified for uh, project management and other engineering services that would still get paid from that initial $400,000 article that was from a year ago. 
Um, so then you're really at 1.8. Yes, um, you know, the the increase um, ended up being about um, uh, 400 to uh, 500. So when you are talking about the, the global project, you're you're just over what that really comes out to when you look at the tables, but not far off. And, and I think when we approved the project at uh, uh, one, uh, 1.3, that was always of the 400 that was approved for, for town meeting engineering and design. And there's but a see, but to, to that. Yeah. Right, and part of that is that we were going to apply for the 500,000 small bridge grant, which Weston Sampson is in the process of applying for. So when, when we're talking about that, say over 2 million, that's the total authorization, but we have these other funds to sort of bring that down um, so that you know we're offsetting that cost. Uh, we had, sorry, just one more thing. Um, as part of the special town meeting in fall, we had identified uh, using 75,000 for ARPA funds as part of the math um, that was presented to town meeting to sort of uh, take care of some of the water and sewer infrastructure that was associated with the bridge. Uh, this um, the, the additional 500 is really to uh, further bring down the costs and also make sure that we stay within that original 1.3 authorization. So to your point, it is 2.2 or 2.3 million dollars yes. from sort of concept to done. Right. The whole when you put the whole thing project. together. So that's what I was not piecing together. So yeah, thank you for explaining that. And you were right. Yeah, thank you. Is there numbers? Uh, Tends to be, tends to be my strong suit, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> unfortunately. All right, for the record, just so people know what we're joking about, we just did some math, and Steve was faster at coming up with an average of three numbers with decimal points than I was with doing the same operation on a calculator. Just <laughs> putting that out there. I'll, uh, I'll take that as a compliment. It is yeah. great. It's a compliment of the highest order, <laughs> as are most of my compliments, of you, sir. Okay, so... Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, well, that's basically where I was going with my with my analogy is it's just it, it appears to me we've got a lot of moving pieces here, obviously, but it, we you know to me we're my biggest fly in the ointment for me is that it is not attached to the bridge. That's yes. my biggest problem. There's too many things I feel that are not desirable with having a detached bridge. I know the bridge is going to be built strong enough. Dennis gave a great presentation. The estimates that we read were very inclusive. Um, yeah, very, very good explanation in there. But uh, you know, to build a separate footbridge that we're going to run snow removal equipment over a uh, sidewalk plow, I imagine, and to be connecting that onto a private piece of property, I, I just don't like that combination. And then going one step further, it just would appear to me this bridge is very, very expensive at two point. Almost 2.3 million, 2.2 million cut. Well, I think the other comment from the gentleman from Austin Sampson was that even if we put the sidewalk on the bridge, you have still had to put an extra piece in, was my understanding, which was yes, about a six foot width or something like that, is almost as much to do that as it is to do the bridge. I, I heard that the same way, Mario. Yeah. Yes, yep. it would. In fact, the way the bridge is designed in the estimate that we were given uh, a couple of weeks ago, it would, in fact, make the bridge wider yep. um, and therefore drive up the cost. Right. Um, OK, footage wise, it was almost the same. Press. Any other questions, comments? That you want to make? I have one other interesting comment. That's what you're uh, here for. And again, I don't, I don't want to. Yeah, this is a, this is a no. I've been saying right along that we're a little disjointed on this bridge compared to my recollection because I was on the board when we went through the Fowler Street Bridge. Yeah. And at the time, I was on FinCom when we went over. There's of course a nickname for it, but it was the Fisk Mill Road Bridge. Yeah. The Fisk Mill Road Bridge was. We split with Milford. Our half was 280000 It was a $560,000 bridge. Then, less than a year later, yeah. we went through the process to getting the grant. Yeah. And I always said we received that grant in advance of the warranter. Yeah. I remember it that way, and I everybody said I was wrong. So, 
Fortunately, the internet's here to help me out. In November, our then town manager who was in the Milford Daily News said we're applying for the small bridge grant. This was November 2016. Yes. Applied for the bridge grant. The Mass State had all the criteria out there. How many, uh, not exactly how many dollars were up to, stuff, but it was, it was a culverts and bridges. Culverts up to 400,000, bridges up to 500,000. So I found the award here. I said, I knew we got it and I knew it was in advance. Here it is, it's dated uh, March 29th, 2017. The announcement, again, the application was done in the tail end of 16. We were awarded the money. It was 36 different communities, as you can see, and it was 36 communities, $16 million. And here in Central Mass, there's the towns up in being one. I can read them off to you, but I don't want to bore you. Starting with Arlington and ending with Weymouth, but Upton's in there. Six weeks later, we go to town meeting. Six weeks later, we ask the town for $600,000. The original estimate on that bridge was four, 541. So the thinking was, you get the construction money, 541, you get your grant reimbursement, in theory, it was only going to cost us forty-one thousand for that bridge. That was the wisdom back in those days. I, I um, and we do have that's with this. I think there's a couple things where one programs can change, but I think the timing window was also maybe was more advantageous. Uh, not having been there, knowing that these grants are cyclical, um, knowing maybe what the timing was, and that. If we did not take immediate action, we weren't faced with the potential closure. That could have an impact on on timing. Um, so yeah, see Dennis is with this with us. He made the and I and I think the beacon I was reading the beacon from last year. It looks like they opened it every April. April twenty two, they announced they were funding X number of dollars, and the the process opened April of twenty two. Mm -hmm. So I imagine April twenty three. In the same situation. Totally. I, so I, I would uh, see Maureen if you had other questions or comments before we. Yeah. Okay. So the only thing I, I would say or ask um, Dennis and and but at your discretion, obviously, is we don't need to debate history. We shouldn't talk about history. But one question that I have that I think is part of the point Steve is making is. When I hear the Fowler Street Bridge costs six hundred thousand dollars and the Grove Street Bridge is going to cost two point three million dollars, I ask myself, what am I misunderstanding? So could you help clarify what's happening here? The Fowler Street Bridge was just under one point three million dollars when it was complete. So yeah, I don't and then sorry, fist fist mill, I think is the one you were talking about. That, that was like sixty. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry about that. Fist mill. I mean, yeah. Spluckman Battalion is correct that we were awarded. In other words, we were notified by the state that they had accepted our application for the small bridge grant of a half a million dollars at the end of 2017. They did not give us any funds. In fact, I had to apply for an extension because we had a delay because of the chapter 91. Um, application ended up costing us an extra six months and we had to come up with some extra money for engineering if you recall and we yeah. did not expend enough of the money before the grant terminated and I can provide the board with the letter which is signed by the the past town manager and I and, and the board was notified and we had to send a letter to uh, MassDOT requesting an extension of that grant so that we could expend the 500,000 to get reimbursed for it. And I have all that paperwork and would be more than happy to share it with the board. But we did not actually get the $500,000 until we spent the $500,000. And this grant so, is exactly yeah. the same thing. Yep, so I, I, I totally appreciate that. I don't think the Grove Street Bridge ARPA commitment vote that we're gonna take now, that is a, you know, we're gonna do that, that's fine. How much did the Fisk Mill bridge cost to complete total? The Fisk Mill was before me. Um, it was completed right before I started in December gotcha. 2017. So I don't recall, but I remember it being a split between the two towns. And I yep, don't recall the exact amount. Got it. So the, the is it possible that the 560 was our portion 
uh, no, was two, 280 was our portion. Now, I will say that particular bridge that did not count the engineering. That was the construction phase, I believe. Okay. I'd, I'd have to dig back into that one. Okay. But back in those years, yeah. engineering wasn't 20% of the project. It was a relatively small percentage. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So um, we're good. So can, if there are no other questions, can we make a motion on this um, conversation, please? I'll make the motion. Thank you. I move that the Board of Selectmen vote to authorize up to $575,000 from the town's offer allocation to supplement the funds authorized by the November 1st, 2022 special town meeting for the construction of the Grove Street Bridge Park. Uh, I second the motion. All yeah. those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Nay. Motion carries by majority action. Uh, next on the agenda, we have some liquor licenses for Rushford and Sons. Um, this is our annual tranche of summer outing liquor licenses. Um, is Mr. Goodman here? He is. I am. Hello. Good evening, everyone. Hi. I figured you might want to might well, might want to say hi to everybody. Good evening. How you doing? You get very well. You almost got me in person, but um, I'm glad that I ended up coming home and doing this remotely so uh, I can listen in and also help my wife with bedtime for the kids. But very well. Thank you, guys. And uh, here to answer any questions that you have. We will be expeditious because we can all respect and appreciate <laughs> the value of you helping your wife and spending time with your family. So. Um, any questions from the board on these applications? No, it's all been approved by the police chief. Public safety. Yeah, I think this is um, pretty straightforward. I think we've done this the last two years. Yeah. I was just uh, perusing the applications. I, I think they're all here. I think I, the dates seem to be correct. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, if it's good with public safety. It's good with me. Okay. Great. I, I, I don't see uh, police or fire signature on these ones, but they've done it in the past. I don't think anything has changed. So I certainly don't expect anything. You do have, so they have signed them. Okay, that's what I wanted to just make sure because the ones in our packet. Okay. So, and I, I knew that wouldn't, or I expected that wouldn't be an issue, but okay, that, that helps. So given that, the motion can just be Okay, and I would assume I see that the tip certifications on it are on here. So, Mr. Goodman, I'm assuming that the area would be fenced off as it has been in the past or roped off. We intend to do it exactly the same way we've done it the last two years, and um, I am happy to provide uh, tips uh, certification for all employees who are going to be pouring. Okay. Okay. Great. Somebody like can to make a motion. That would be wonderful. Okay. Uh, I make a motion that the Board of Selectmen vote to approve the application submitted by Rushford and Sons owner operator Brian Goodman for a special one day wine and malt only pouring liquor license for events to be held on June 28th, July 5th, July 12th, July 19th, July 26th, August 2nd, and August 9th, 2023. Under Mass General Law, Chapter 138, Section 14, to be held at Kiwanis Beach, Upton, Mass. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries by unanimous action. Thank you, sir. Have a good night. Oh, wait. No, we well, got one more. Got one more. Appli <laughs> application for the entertainment license. Yeah. Right. So, as I, I know, as I recall, Michael was on uh, with you guys last August, and we had a um, a kind of testing phase for live music. As far as I'm aware, there was no complaints and no issues. So we're hoping to have a lovely, very relaxing uh, season of live music in the beer garden outside. Okay. Um, questions, comments, thoughts from the board? I think we all... We didn't have any complaints or anything. Joe, did we ever hear anything? No. I know I drove by a couple of times and rolled my windows down and it was very moderated and certainly hadn't right. heard any complaints and it was wrapped up 
pretty early, so I don't know how folks feel about it or what conditions or questions we want to talk about, but we're here for us. Yeah. Uh, I think the only question, and I think you made mention of it in the application, was about the German UPA, UPA band. Mm -hmm. So I'm assuming <laughs> the orientation is that the orientation of the band will be a little bit different to make sure that the noise is kept at a tolerable level? Yes. Um, so it's going to be very rare that we have anything above and beyond a kid playing the hits on an acoustic guitar at a very moderate level. Um, if there are any exceptions to that, um, I have I am in constant touch uh, contact with my neighbors and uh, want to make sure they're happy because if they're happy, chances are everybody else is happy. But we all I mean, I think we've demonstrated that we try to be respectful of everybody and it's not exactly uh, yeah we're, we're, we're not exactly a loud place. Great. Very good. Great. I'll move that the Board of Selectmen vote to approve the renewal of the outdoor entertainment license submitted by Rushwood and Sons Brew House at 8 Grove Street, Upton. I would second the motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. The motion carries by unanimous action. Now I'll say good night and have a rest of your pleasant rest of your evening, Mr. Goodman. Good night, everyone. I'm sure I will be speaking with you all soon. Have a lovely evening. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Good as well. Good night. Good night. Town manager report. Okay. Uh, so for the board, and you all have a copy of this. This is also posted on the um, town's website under town um, manager news and updates. Uh, so main thing is that this Thursday we are coming in on our uh, 2023 annual town meeting. Uh, lots of resources are available online. I totally encourage uh, people who will be attending to uh, review those, uh, most notably uh, on our website, we have the town manager's FY24 budget recommendation. We have the finance committee FY24 report uh, that contains not only um, the breakdown for individual departments uh, for their budget request for this coming fiscal year, but also includes a um, copy of the warrant articles and uh, summary of those those warrant articles as well. We have the annual report, which is also available online um, on the town manager's page. And if you uh, click the link for the top of the website, there's a little YouTube icon. We have uh, Upton Cable YouTube channel uh, and uh, I, uh, working with Paul Norton um, and our cable department prepared a short uh 12 minute video that basically is a preview of town meeting um so we have a good amount of information out there and again that's going to be this thursday may 4th 7 p.m at the auditorium of uh, nipma uh regional high school uh i think i already had mentioned to the board but in case did not uh, replace the toilets have been installed and waistlines inspected so everything is clear an email went out um recently to departments as well as to boards and committees letting them know that the uh, the temporary sort of restriction of town hall has been rescinded. We'll continue to monitor the situation until the second part of the project is put in place. Um, but um, things seem to be working well with that fix. Uh, I did identify for those boards and committees so that we didn't get uh, all boards and committees trying to get back into town hall, uh, that the governor has signed legislation that extends the uh, remote and hybrid um, uh, conduct of meetings to March 2025. So for those boards and committees that like to meet uh, virtually, they are welcome to continue to do so. Uh, virtual meetings such as this are still allowed, um, you know, for another uh, two years. Uh, lastly, uh, we are continuing to work on a town uh, website and uh, reviewing mock-ups to allow for uh, then a final design and transfer of our information. The final it should be that uh, yesterday was the uh, first day of operation of our Upton Elder and Social Services slash Council on Aging Department. Um, uh, they were fully operational at the new Upton Community Center, uh, including running buses back from uh, back and forth between the Community Center, Mill House, and Coach Road. Uh, Sandy and I were over taking a look at how things were going, and there was a lot of visitors coming in to take a look. Uh, it was really interesting to also see a lot of the seniors that were coming in were also then 
going through the library stacks and really visiting all uh, corners of the library. So uh, the library opened fully today. Um, and even though there was a couple uh, downpours for, uh, sporadically through the day, um, you know, it's, it's something that lots of people have been visiting and it's great to actually have that building up and running. Years of effort, years of effort of the building committee in overseeing this project to finally be in that building. It's really great. Um, other elements uh, that are on the other items on the town manager report, uh, the full report can be found on the website, but just highlights uh, for the upcoming election on May 9th. Uh, there is contested board of selectmen as well as school committee, uh, but there are two vacant uh, board seats, finance committee and planning board. Um, that are still uh, out there. Uh, she's aware of uh, someone's organizing a writing campaign for planning board, but nothing yet for finance. Uh, last day, if you want to absentee vote, is Monday at noon for that uh, Tuesday, May 9th election. Uh, and coming up in a month, uh, third graders from Memorial School will be visiting Town Hall, uh, meeting with different departments. And then they're going to go get a tour of the community center as well. So this is something that with COVID had been put on a little bit of a hiatus in recent years, but it's great to have that back. Uh, library on Saturday had 162 participate in the book walk. Uh, great turnout and uh, their spring library book sale is planned for Saturday, May 13th. So two weeks away. Um, other than that, um, just encourage people to take a look at the rest of the town manager report online. There's a lot of information there. Absolutely, yes. Robert. Lots going on, lots of exciting news. Lots yeah. of work. Good. Yeah, that's very impressive. 162 people on the book lock. Yeah. Unbelievable. I was like, what did you said that? It's awesome. I mean, yeah. it's just a testament to, you know, the energy around the facility so i think people are really excited about it i know i'm just walking around hearing lots of people talking about it and and how it's been so positively received so they say the playground's very busy too yeah yeah good all right any other questions comments uh no i have none for you no all set all right fantastic thank you sir uh, next up, we have uh, public inputs, uh, public comment. Anyone in the audience have any comments? Mr. Flaherty. I wanted to dovetail to what uh, Mr. Manager had said, and uh, kudos to Matthew and his library people putting together uh, I, I was amazed. They just kept coming on, coming, coming on, coming. I was there for most of the time, and uh, I was quite surprised by favorable, favorable uh, comments that we received. Everybody was uh, pretty impressed with the building, and if they weren't, they probably didn't dare tell me. <laughs> so, <laughs> Uh, the playground was open. Uh, part of the playground was open, and uh, I looked there a couple of times. As uh, there were a lot of kids out there, and if you look on the library webpage, and there is a Facebook page that Steve Rackerton maintains for the uh, project itself, and you will you will see uh, again pictures of what took place. Uh, on Saturday with the kids, and then going back, there are several pictures showing the progress of the uh, project going back uh, from April of 22. Yeah, I guess we'll see. All the days run together. It's tough. And for me, one other thing, please. This is Italian and I know it didn't. We were always on many times we on the opposite sides and you should see them, but. Uh, I, I say publicly that I commend people who uh, volunteered to serve the town. And uh, congratulations, Mr. McTennan. You served your, served your time well, and uh, you know I, I respect that. 
respect people who serve serve the town. So no hard feelings. Like, feel like I'm going to be out of work with you tonight. Oh, yeah. I was going to say I feel like we're going to cry a little bit, but all right. <laughs> yeah, work with yeah, 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 that's better. <laughs> Yeah, you did. Don't let your head get too big on it. No. <laughs> yeah, I'm changing into my running shoes. I might just, you may only see the back of me. I might just keep on running. <laughs> Why are you about to head yet? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Give my, my annual invite to the Memorial Day. Great. Ceremony. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Your letter. No, see you. Come to work. 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 Come to and I hope to see you all. See you all. Thank you. Thank you, Russ. Thank you for the invitation. It's always a privilege to participate in the day. Yep. Thank, Thank you, Russ. Yeah. And thanks for the vote of confidence. I should have too often people. Yeah, I've been saying. Go ahead. No, no that's a, so I am. So this, the meeting that we have on Thursday will technically be your last board meeting. Is that right? Oh, that is correct. So this is really the last meeting. It's like the public meeting. So if I'm going to make a speech about you, this is the time to do it. You can do it the next meeting when I'm not here. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I mean, we are posted for half an hour before town meeting, yeah. but again, you're not, well, you don't have the captive no, no, right? And, and I mean, I'll, I'm, I'm, I know I'm kidding around a little bit, but in, in all seriousness, Steve, like you, it, it's been a privilege to serve with you. It, it has. Nice. I know that we, like Mr. Flaherty, we agree on some things, we disagree on some things. You know, we've had our debates and our discussions and some of our, you know, heated engagements, but I think at the end of the day, we all sort of came out better for it and, and learned to respect each other a lot more maybe than we did in the early days when we, we didn't know each other as well. Uh, so I, I appreciate having been on the journey with you and all the conversations, the engagement, the energy in the town's been really fortunate to have you serving the community. So, and I know you'll continue to serve in a couple of other capacities, but uh, this has been six years of a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, and you've done a lot of great things for the town. So we should be proud of that and feel good about that. It was uh, again a pleasure to learn from you and to to be part of it with you. Well, thank you, thank you. Yeah, it's always it's always a, a mixed bag. Yeah, you know, got to be a mixed bag. That's how you get things. It's hard. You know, I'm a guy that likes to think I'm always right. So how can I always be right? Yeah, because you have two others that think they're right. Yeah, exactly. I'd be on the wrong side of all these arguments. I just want to thank you for. Spending a lot of time away from your home for the citizens of Upton. I think they appreciate it and I appreciate everything you've done. Well, thank you. Thank you. I think people, uh, yeah, I think that's something in general. That's that's what I hear. I think people probably don't exactly know how much time we put into it. Um, there's the meetings, of course, but there's, of course, time behind the scenes, right? Trying to prepare, trying to coordinate with Joe, different things that may pop up. So, um, of course, I'm going to be running for trust fund commission, so at least I'll be at town hall maybe once, twice a month or, or more and still stay engaged and yeah, I'll probably, um, you know, reserve myself to just complaining about one or two articles at town meeting. At town meeting. You can so you it. might like me and respect me now, but you might not like and respect me in November. I, I absolutely know that things can evolve, so we'll see how that goes. <laughs> You better well, have the yeah, answers. That's exactly it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's what you can do, right? Like now as a citizen, you can get up there. You can just grill us like 
fiendishly just go at it. Yeah, like, we're not going to take those, those uh, you know, hypothetical answers. That's right. Numbers. I'm show me numbers. You'll show us the numbers. I'll be there with my calculator. Don't be doing math in your head. It's not going to go well. I'll we'll check those numbers, right? <laughs> hold on, hold on. Let me get that. So, well, thank, thank we'll you. We'll turn it into TV on voice. Okay, that's fine. Hey, you know what? Six years of service, we can give him a few minutes. Uh, that's here. right. So that's all. Hey. I'm gonna start get my name in two weeks. That's this is yeah, I know. except except for the six people that are watching. Yeah, sitting in this fifteen room. minutes. Of <laughs> this is the, how how many years of service do you have over there? Speaking of years of service, sorry. How many um, years of service do you have in FinCom? Or thirty-eight, so one hundred thirty-eight between thirty-eight and forty in the country. That you've been alive or that you've served on FinCom? <laughs> FinCom. Really? I don't know how you should take that. You should take it as a compliment. <laughs> it means you're only 40 years old. That's fantastic. Why did I have 30 in my head? That's almost 40 years, Paul. 38, 38, 40. What year she wants? Huh? Yeah, I think we all thought it was around 30. 19. He's in the machine in the store. <laughs> Yeah. What? Yeah. 83, 84, 85, 86. Early 80s. You're getting up there. All right. Well, so you'll get like, what, 10, 15 minutes, right? He got his few minutes here. So when you retire, if you ever decide to retire, we'll give you 15 minutes of fame. It'll be 15 minutes. It'll be any time. So you said you just wanted me to do it at the next meeting. I just want to get out of here as quick as I can. I just want to leave. <laughs> Before you all change your mind. Next. Next. Saying some kind things about it. May not last. Let's go on on high. Let's go on on high. Steve, I'm going to start this. See, that, that's fine. I'm only here. All right. Sorry, I I, di I digress, but wanted to do that. So it's a pr privilege of sitting here. So uh, discussion of the Upton Community Center room and reservation policies is next on the agenda. Um, you want to just present this? I don't see Matt here. Uh, so uh, being a board of selectmen policy, um, we get to uh, uh, have the board consider uh, the following policies for adoption. So uh, within your packet is basically the full so that I wanted to have the board be able to see everything from study room A, B and C policy through great room, uh, program room and uh, the kitchen. So the first part of the document that was in the packet is what the board had already uh, reviewed and approved at its April 4th meeting. Uh, the second entitled the great room program room policy uh basically continues from there and um is specifically for the use of the great room and program room uh outside of uh typical sort of building hours where uh the ess coa staff um would most likely have programs um daytime use would be really restricted to uses that then don't conflict with program use um, you know, if there was a, a board meeting, if there was um, something that was staff related, those would be able to occur. So this really applies to those uses that are outside of those that window. And um, uh, the board may recognize a majority of the language is lockstep with the town um, hall use policy. Uh, we wanted to be consistent so that we at least had uh, similar uh, restrictions between town hall and the community center, allowing the same uh, sort of process for evaluating and also uh, for maintaining the, uh, the facilities. We do specify uh, the capabilities of each room and um, permits that may be uh, needed if it's deemed necessary as they submit applications through the town manager's office. Um, so uh you will see and anyone seeing this uh draft policy will see a lot of commonality between our existing facilities uh policy and what is proposed here uh it is the perspective from staff that all the effort that the board has spent on uh, sort of fine tuning this town hall you know really sort of identified um a good strategy for how to make use of that building um uh, I don't think there should be any sort of surprises. We do have um, similar language as far as uh, private party use, uh, but we don't have uh, 
uh, per the board's last meeting. Uh, any sort of statements on this allow. So here they continue. No, it's not permitted. It um, references a one day liquor license in this policy. I thought that was removed and I'm sorry and thank you. Let me take a. Did, so did we, have, oh, I'll, I'll did, did we have a conversation about the difference between sort of a facility that's a town hall versus a facility that's got a commercial kitchen in it? So in there, there is the alcohol use. I know that. No, the alcohol use we we uh, spoke about on the last policy, but I see that it was in here in the after hours. I see Sunday and holiday hours in here. So on, sorry, I'm just looking for that because we what just page and paragraph. Well, I don't know. I read it this afternoon. Okay. <laughs> Uh, let's see. There's the instruments. Um, is it so? I guess the the primary question, I guess, first is before we read the eight page document here, just because I do we as a board. So what's what is your understanding that the recommendation from yourself and the and Matt and Maggie are around use of the facility? and where you think we landed with regards to alcohol and alcohol use in the community center. Um, I did. I did not think that we were going to allow it. Um, uh, so and was that your understanding? I think we touched upon it. It's going to go with time and health policy. Yeah, I think what Maureen's referring to is when we were talking earlier about the other meeting rooms and we kind yes. of defined those policies and we expected to see yeah. there. We kind of touched upon, Joe was kind of looking for uh, temperature of the board, so to say. Okay. What we were thinking. Yeah. Um, and I think that's what we had thought. Okay. Uh, so that's because I know I was in the minority, so I just wanted to double check. So that's. Well, I good. also read too that the great room was going to be open after hours. Mm -hmm. Well, can we can we can we finalize the alcohol conversation? Okay. So no alcohol. Nope. No alcohol. No alcohol. My my no. rationale okay. was yeah. I, there's other facilities in town that are yep. available that people nice. can. Yep. They can, you know, if they need to host, uh, say, a shower or some sort of a party that liquor can That's be served, that would be right. Yes, yes. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Sorry to, to re ask that. All right. All right. Okay. So it's just one line. And then the, uh, uh, the center being open on Sundays and holidays. So that was one of the things that, um, uh, it was we wanted to create a process just like town hall where if someone did want to rent it out on a Saturday or a Sunday outside of the hours of um, library for elder and social services that we had that process to allow for that to happen. Um, uh, and the building set up for it. So for the great room, we have a metal separation between the rest of the library so we really can can uh, compartmentalize any sort of use of the great room uh, limited to the kitchen um, for uh, some minor things like making coffee, using the sink, using the fridge. Um, at this time and in, in, in the um, subsequent kitchen policy, it basically says, you know, we're just not ready yet. We still need a lot of work, but if someone needed to use the fridge or the freezer, we wanted to make that a bit. And that we'll we'll revise and identify what then specific use ends up being coming back with the amendment. Uh, so I know that the the use of that outside of those hours was was something that the town had conversed a lot with. So and here we made an allowance for it, um, and that uh, depending on the number of people and the nature, uh, it may require you know, uh, police, it may require janitorial service uh, since, um, you know, if, if it's a, uh, if we were holding a housing forum on a Sunday outside of uh, regular hours, we don't really need much in the way of uh, security deposit or other janitorial service, especially if staff is there. If you have it that someone wants to, to rent it for uh, um, some sort of family gathering, um, where they're bringing in a cater uh, to bring in food. I think, I think we we can touch on that. Yeah. Okay. So do, do you? So are you good? Or um, 
I am, but it, it requires janitorial service. Uh, it's a holiday or a Sunday is that they get paid double time by whoever is renting or, mm -hmm. or paying a fee for the yes. Yep, so that's one of the last pages is basically a, a fee and we have um, one and a half times the um, wages for uh, for the um, uh, custodial services. So. That's a good question. Do you see that? <laughs> one quick sec. Yeah, let me just yeah, let me just chime in real quick. Um, yeah, there's a lot of information yeah. on the policy. I, I did miss the part about the, the alcohol. Um, as far as I haven't been in the building recently, but I was did the walkthrough tour uh, probably about six weeks ago. So as long as the library can be properly secured off, um, I don't think it'll be a problem, right? Allowing access on a Saturday or Sunday to the great room. Provided all other okay. yes, Matt, right? Yeah. So that and the alarm system is set that an alarm can be set for the library portion. Um, and when someone's used the great room and permitted areas, that um, won't interfere, and if someone does break into that other area, the, the alarms will go off. Okay. Other questions from the board before we put in a comments? Um, no. Okay. I think so. Let's put area. The question I get back to ask is the manager. You say the custodian and sign with him. What if the custodian doesn't want to do it? So that becomes one of the main challenges and why I've asked basically for three weeks, a minimum of three weeks um, before any event, because we can reach out to the schools to see if someone would like to be able to pay or BBT, um, come up with those sort of, say, on-call situations. We don't know what the demands can be. So if it's a four-hour minimum, I mean, yeah, there could be a conflict, but we might be able to find someone else to do it if, if we have enough. And if it and if it becomes a problem, we'll solve it. Right? There, yeah. There's ways to solve that. Problem. Somebody that knows the building inside and out. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like I could be doing. Ah. That. I didn't find a custodian. There we go. I see where you're going with it. Senior, senior work. Took yeah. me a minute. That was good. That was. <laughs> see, that was that was like the double T. She's vying to make sure it's time and a half, and then he's like, oh, "It's time and a half." I mean. <laughs> You know, say he doesn't want to do it. Love it. And the and the fee schedule. Is there a a fee schedule for renting the? Yeah, it's it's keep keep so, going. Yeah, you know, you know that is a question because it only says deposit. It doesn't say right. it's actually a fee. Like so, the two fifty deposit means what for in for in town? It's a refundable deposit. Okay, so are we renting it out of town? Yes, yeah, yeah, out of yeah. town, base fee of $100 an hour, not to exceed the same fee. And that's what is on the town hall policy. Yeah. It's consistent with the town hall policy. Yeah. Okay. So uh, it seems that the only thing we really need is then deleting that last sentence in the event that a one day like her uh one day uh license sale of alcohol is approved by the board like we speak lop require so we could seems like that's the only thing we need to delete mike you have something go ahead mike yeah go ahead what was on the meeting yes what the one out of the one day that you could get one day no, no. Okay. so the, 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 the that was there's no liquor. The, right now, the policy is that there's not going to be liquor in the community center. Ever. 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 You guys are never going to rent the place up? Maybe Boy Scouts or North Coast. I mean, honestly, you built it for the community. And now I'm not allowed to go in and have a glass of wine Sunday afternoon at a wedding shower or whatever have you. Or any any event at all, we're just going to shut it off because you guys don't want it. I agree with you, so I will. And I, I think, divide my I think the, the town voted to put a twelve million dollar project together, and you four people get the opportunity to, to policy on that. 
it's free mm -hmm. to put the policy down on that. And the $12 million spent with the anticipation of having a community center where people could go and get together is done. Up to you guys and time to have a chantorial that's probably going to take a minute, taken care of on Monday morning. I just really want to thank you guys for making this up. Got a 12 million bucks into that place. And it was so never not going to allow a glass of wine or beer to put in that place with a commercial kitchen was solved. What did we put the commercial kitchen? If I may retort. It's our meeting. Absolutely. No, this is let's I'm happy to allow the discussion. It's a senior center. The previous senior center had a kitchen. The fact of the matter is this kitchen is far superior and the building obviously is it's beautiful. It's far superior to our other accommodations. However, saying all that, the building was never intended to be a, 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 um, a venue facility. It's not, not considered to be a function hall. People want to get together and have awards, banquets, showers, whatnot. We have other venues in town to do that. There's a room available upstairs, the Rose Garden, obviously the VFW, obviously the uh, Nibong Ground Gun Club. People want to have drinks. I love going to events and having a couple of drinks. No problem at all. It does not belong, in my opinion, doesn't belong in a municipal facility. Um, facility should listen to you. Right. Uh, 80, 80, 70, 80. That I don't know. I don't have the answer. But we didn't build that so people could be inside drinking. Well, I mean, so the, the the other thing I would say, so what I would say is we hear you, right? We had this discussion as a board, the three member board, we get to decide. That's the way that all runs, right? But we also work for the community, right? So there are elections. There are ways that you can talk to board members. The policy can change, right? So if you lobby board members or something changes or the community speaks up or there's a huge outcry or whatever, right? There's ways to influence the board. We're not, we don't act independently of the voters, right? We're accountable to the voters. So yeah, there's three of us. We have to make a decision. We debated. We decided the decision's been made as a board. And if that needs to be reevaluated based on whatever new information is out there or whatever new circumstances are out there, then it can happen. What I can tell you is you're not going to change the vote tonight. So that's that's the situation we're in. And we can sort of try to figure out a way to, to make changes going forward if that's, you know, there's good reasons to do that. And obviously, we serve the public. Yeah, certainly if there was a tidal wave of town people that thought that that function hall should be open all the time and liquor should be served there, then the board would certainly be willing to reconsider that. Yes. But so that's that. Everybody I've talked to is not in favor. They don't think it should be consuming alcohol and municipal property. Everybody I've talked to. Now, I haven't talked to 8,000 people. We have 8,000 residents, but everybody I've talked to does not think it's, does not think that, well, I take that best. So I don't, I don't want to debate this right now. So are you going to change your mind tonight? Are you going to change your mind tonight? Okay. So any other questions or different topics or comments? This is the use of this building. It's brand new to the time. It's going to be baby steps. So we figure out how this thing works. And I've told people with the, the use of the kitchen and all that, it's baby steps, baby steps. Thank you. Any other closing comments? Nope. OK. Thank you. I will. And uh, any other questions from the board comments from the board other than that one change of taking out the sentence about the liquor license? No, I think the rest of the, the rest of the document. Oh, good. It's very, okay. very inclusive. There's a lot of information. There's a lot of don'ts, yeah. you know, in there. There's a lot of restriction in there. Um, so again, that's something that we may revisit over time. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I will well, send out a spare pay. Somebody want to make a motion? I move that the Board of Selectmen vote to adopt the great room and program room policy, except for the last sentence about alcohol on page nine. 
and the kitchen use policy is proposed and amended. I would second the motion. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Nay. Motion carries by majority action. Next on the agenda, we have year end transfers. I do see Mr. Costa here. Good evening. Can everybody hear me? Yeah. Through the chair, um, so fiscal year 23, it's coming to an end. Um, it's been a challenging uh, fiscal year uh, due to inflation issues, concerns. Um, it's been a very difficult labor market, um, also supply and chain issues that I'm sure you know everybody has experienced um, in the past you know year or two. Um, so we have seven transfers in front of you for a total of eighty-three thousand um, dollars. So we come to you early this year. Typically, we come at the end of the year, um, you know, in July. So we're looking to um, cover some you know some deficits and some potential deficits through June thirtieth. Um, there's three here um, in the, under the finance department treasure collector expense. Um, the first two transfers are within uh, the department. Um, and then there's a 12,500 transfer from town council to finance department. And then we have in public safety, we have the police uh, transferring funds from police building maintenance to police utilities and fire uh, vehicle maintenance to fire EMS wages. Um, and then another $10,000 from fire EMS new equipment to fire EMS wages. And then the last item, uh, subman wages to finance department wages of $14,000. Uh, and also to note, uh, so with the new uh, budget this year, 24, uh, the budget will be voted by department. So if, if you know, with that new model, um, if that was the case, there would only be two transfers in front of you. So with the uh, the department being voted, they'll, be, they'll provide some flexibility with the department in case of, you know, if these inflation concerns continue, then the department, they're able to take care of, um, you know, any potential deficits um, during the year within the department. So that's all I have if, if anybody has any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Questions? Uh, I have not. Great. On the finance department transfers, have we gotten written approval for um, expending the funds? So I, we, um, so Joe and myself, we did talk to uh, DOR. We've also talked to the outside auditors. Um, we did talk to them and let them know that, you know, we had challenges and, and the challenges that we had in the finance department, we're not alone. Um, also other communities as well, they've experienced uh, similar challenges um, like us. Um, so we did talk to them and they did communicate to us as long as we're able to cover these deficits by the end of the fiscal year, um, that you know, you know that would that that would be a great thing. That would be a good thing for us to do. And this is something that we're you know hopefully this is a once in a lifetime um, you know issue that we experience in the finance department. And um, I think with the current team, you know, we're well served, and I you know feel confident that you know this will this will not happen uh, again. Um, and just to add on to what uh, Kenny had mentioned, um, uh, you know, sort of revisiting that issue uh, during the, the conversation that I had with uh, DOR, you know, I explained, um, you know, exactly what it what had happened, changes to staff, training new staff, and then having, you know, uh, throughout it seems all the, the last half of 2022, whether it was with the finance department or it was in other departments, you know, we were constantly. Um, dealing with staffing issues. So uh, we identified that this was truly a, a unique aspect that there uh, were some things that um, we should have intercepted, should not have processed and that internally we have made those adjustments, made sure we're on the same page. There's the opportunity to revise policies to make sure that it doesn't happen again. Um, uh, in talking to, to DOR, um, they did not identify anything as far as a concern. Um, knowing that we had this meeting scheduled um, to uh, consider year end transfer. Um, one of the main things that, you know, where I'm focused on is really trying to put calendar year 22 and fiscal year 
23 sort of behind us in the rearview mirror. There's a lot of things that we want to be able to that we have corrected that we uh, are putting in place to make sure that uh, things don't happen again. That comes down to things like a or standard operating procedures, putting uh, processes in place so that we can make sure that things don't get missed and you know focusing on the the year ahead um one of the reasons why these are important things to do is because also uh even if the bill that get paid we really don't want to be going into this year um and have any sort of uh deficit um you know we we have bills that we need to pay and don't want to have any negative consequences because of that so that's why um, you know, we utilize a year-end transfer to take care of those those things, um, and um, so we're focused on on a successful 24. I have another comment. Yep. I asked for a written authorization for the OR, mm -hmm. and I'd like to know where did the board you. vote on? No, I did it at a board meeting. I know. Nobody what? said otherwise. I looked right at Joe and asked, I am requesting. And as a board member, I can make a request. Okay. But my other question is, is what's KP Law's opinion? So um, uh, from a legal standpoint, um, the law identifies when and how appropriations that are made from town meeting, what you spent in that um, you need to be able to spend within uh, the appropriation. Now, things do happen. Um, and, you know, unlike, say, emergency uh, expenditures where you can go into uh, deficits and like snow and ice where then there's specific authorization, when an account goes into a deficit, there is not an explicit authorization that then is in place. Um, the explicit authorizations are in a state of emergency that the board of selectmen then identify that state of emergency, allowing that to happen. You have a flood, you need to, you have a natural catastrophe that you have to expend those funds. That's where that's set aside. So while there is not, say, a, um, uh, a legal, uh, justification for ex an expenditure. On the flip side, there are processes in place such as year-end transfers that allow for us to make up those, those differences. Are there things that in hindsight we could have done differently? Yeah, but we were also focused and we're experiencing what for Upton and for many communities really would be a unique circumstance and that um, now we have uh, the people that are in place have a common understanding of what we should be doing and that's what we focus on going forward. Do we have the legal authority to do? So it yes and no. Um and the reason why I say that is that uh explicitly I would just like to say I'm don't think that you should answer legal questions. He's not a lawyer. No, but this is coming from the lawyer. Right. So we should share what the lawyer shared. So if there's a written document or if you want to read from the lawyer's statement, that's probably the uh, best thing to do. Um, so or the lawyer's opinion. Or the lawyer's opinion is, is was from a phone call, so I don't have a written opinion because. OK, um, so then let's be clear that what you're sharing is what the lawyer has said to you, yeah. not your opinion because you're not a lawyer. Yeah. So the lawyer said to you. What? So there's no legal authority for payment of it. However, um, we're dealing with um, situations where in hindsight, you could have uh, corrected it by either calling a special town meeting or had an article on the, the special town meeting as a placeholder. Not having that, there are recourses that are in place such as year end transfer that allow us to make up that difference. The main thing that came from town council is is basically acknowledging that um, an error was made, um, that it was done out of extraordinary circumstances, that we are putting in place internal uh, policies and checks to make sure it doesn't happen again. Um, and just as tonight, taking care of those necessary transfers to then make sure we don't go through the end of the year with negative balance. 
Um, all those things have been done. We already have um, uh, understanding with staff on what should have happened so that it will never happen again. Um, for policies, those will be reevaluated to identify how we can uh, make sure that if there's anything that needs to be strengthened, we can address it. From a budgetary standpoint, if the if the town as one of the finance committees not not pre members not one not present here had stated during a joint meeting that the town approves the budget as a department whole, if we had voted to approve our budgets as a whole department, we never would have been in this cir circumstance in the first place. So that's another corrective measure that's being taken. Yeah, that answers my question. Okay, thank you. Can I uh, weigh in, give kind of render an opinion and, and speak to a few of these topics? I personally am not in favor of this one bucket solves all problem. When we build the budget, I want to know that if I'm appropriating $20,000 for fuel or $30,000 for maintenance, that that's essentially what that money is going for. I don't want to find out that. That's really my my slush. That's my 20% that I can, you know, use to, as a stop gap if I have an issue somewhere else. So me personally, I would not be in, you know, in favor of this one, you know, one bucket solves all. Obviously, we see account numbers here. For folks at home, the, this argument essentially is about a $54,000 deficit, right? There's one, two, three, eight. four, eight. Right. And the bottom one is hit 14,000. So we have 40,000 on the top. The ones that are in question, essentially what we're what we're talking about here is moving money over to the finance department wages and finance department. Expenses. No, not 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 all. The only so you have also some items of that 83 that no, are going from. I'm not talking about the whole 83. I'm only talking about 54,000. Uh, it just transfers one, two, three. And the last one down. No, seven is not included. So it's one, account. two, and three. Correct. Items one, two, and three, and the items one and two are actually within the department. So if if we had the uh, the department totals um, voted, the items one and two would be within the department. And I, I also don't want to conflate a policy change with what we're doing right here, which is approving your end transfer. So those are both very important conversations. I just don't want to conflate them. So one conversation is, are we going to approve these year end transfers? That's what's on the agenda. The other conversation is, how do we feel about the policy of approving our budget at the department level as opposed to at a more granular level? That's not on the agenda. It's an important but separate conversation. I would love to hear your opinion on it. I'm not saying I don't want to hear that. I do want to hear it. You shared it, but if you want to elaborate on that, great. Otherwise, let's focus on what's they, they are separate, but I feel like they're so they're co-joined. Oh, you know, okay. it's, it's, it's hard to pull them apart. Mm -hmm. right? um, I mean, I would think if Maureen's uncomfortable and we can get something from KP, we're meeting Thursday morning, we could get something from KP, uh, you know, be, I shouldn't say Thursday morning. I say Thursday is our annual. We will be meeting an hour in advance. So is it possible that we can get an appropriate answer for Maureen? She said she was all set. I have an appropriate answer. But we're not legally don't have the authority. I have to stand by the law. I'm so I that the question has um uh Sort of bringing it back to the year end transfer. Any any opinion, whether what what I relayed, um, it doesn't have um, bearing on this because this is a bill that was paid in an existing deficit. This is about making sure that as we close out FY twenty three, so these are we different are, things, right? Year end transfers are, on my understanding, are for unpaid bills. These bills they are, are to address. Um, Deficit sure. unpaid bills. So these, so yeah, you're in So you're so in That's something I was unclear of. Give me just a second, Kenny. This is something that I was unclear of. Is that that? So that has actually been deficit spent. That's, that's what I. Spent. That's what the part of it that I didn't understand, and that's what got me around to the whole buckets of money and the different account numbers that you see here. 
that's kind of where I was going with that. I was just to try to understand this as a whole as a whole issue and instead of just simplifying it to yes, the year end transfer is fairly straightforward. But there's something more here. You know, obviously there's a problem in, in Kenny, it's in your department. It's it's your problem essentially, right? We've talked about this ad nauseum, why there's a deficit, what happened, what's being done to make sure that that doesn't happen again. We, we've talked about that. Okay. Right? Have we talked about it? Yes, we have. For six months. Not six months. No. We started talking about it in at least October. Not the deficit. We have the deficit. But at that time, we didn't know the money had been spent. Okay. 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 So when we started the budget process. Yeah. There was a deficit then, and okay. it was on the draft town meeting warrant to, to take care of it. That's when I had a problem then because the money had already been spent. I know what right. the law is. Right. And so we changed, we changed the approach based on that concern. So we weren't doing it at town meeting anymore. No, but you still hadn't solved the problem. Right. So what hadn't, so we pulled the article because um, we can take care of it through this process. Right. That we have so, enough um, flexibility and we wait until May 2nd, which technically yesterday would have been the first opportunity uh, to do year end transfers so we can make up that deficit. Uh, this is the result of basically the last or from over a year from starting still in FY22 to work that SMS strategic municipal solutions who was engaged by the town for treasure collector expenses. That bill, which um, uh, which was uh, paid in November. Okay, hold on. So what is the concern that you have? They have been paid. If you went Bills to check. Have been paid. No, but I'm, I, I, I get what you're saying. So understanding that these bills are paid, they're paid. Right. OK, understanding. Hold on, hold on, hold on. But wait a let minute. Me, I'm finished. Finished. OK, the bills are paid. Yeah. OK, this is a process that we talked to KP law about. And I got an answer from KP law and I'm, I feel really uncomfortable about vote for I, you. I, I'm not you suggesting can do you vote. You I'm not suggesting how you vote in any way, shape or form. I'm just clarifying. The bills are paid. We have a finance director and a town manager that talks to town representatives, lawyers, okay. who said this is an appropriate way to handle this. I don't think they said it was inappropriate. It, it could be done. It's it, but it's a legal way to handle it. They're lawyers, so they wouldn't tell us to do something. And why are they telling us we have no legal authority to do it? Just on that yet point you made at town meeting, we voted the budget. How would you suggest taxpayers? How would you suggest we fix it? Should have fixed it and left the article on the warrant. To do and what would the article have said? It would be to raise because town meeting can raise the money. Yeah. We can't raise something that has been paid already and created a deficit. Well, but we're reallocate. We're so we're reallocating money to cover it. You go so back to costing, the law. It's not cost. It's not costing the taxpayers any more money, right? Yes. We haven't increased our overall budget. Yes, you have. No, no, because we're moving it from account A to account B. Well, do, do the I taxpayers mean, know that? Well, yeah, this is a public meeting. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sure they don't. Well, tell them. I mean, it's a public meeting. Okay, I am. It's an unpaid bill. It's a paid, it's a bill, paid bill that ran a deficit in an appropriation, and exactly. we are not to exceed an appropriation that's right. voted at town meeting by but, the taxpayers. But we did. So, well, shame on us. Shame on us. Everybody's done their mea culpas. It was, it happened. Still it wasn't right. Still you, wasn't right. It, it, it may not be right. But it's it's like not paying the snow and ice budget. <laughs> like it's that's an allowable expenditure, right? What I'm saying to you is this isn't costing taxpayers any more money, right? It's 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 approved money that we're transferring mm -hmm. that was appropriate that will hit our free meeting. cash at the end of the year. That'll be forty thousand. We won't have. Because you're using the money. If that money wasn't used, we'd have the free cash at the end of the year. Okay. So you are affecting the tax base. Okay. That's a great point. 
So what do you want to do about it? Not my problem. I'm not voting for it. You guys can vote for it. So what do you want to do about it? You want to put it on the town meeting warrant in the fall? Can we do that? No. Nope. No. You want to have a special town meeting to do it? I'll clear it up. I want, a, I want a written thing, which I requested from the DOR. Mm -hmm. If they say okay, fine. I'll okay. still vote no, but I'll be, I'll be all right with it. So I, I do have, and I'm, I am awaiting a reply from, from uh, DOR with a specific asking for them to concur that our plan, as we were laid on Friday, um is acceptable to them so once i get that i will provide it to the board okay. um i would uh like to just um sort of respectfully for the for the board point out that the article that was pulled um uh, was proposing to use free cash for the uh, to pay the amount of the bill that was paid in november um so uh based on feedback from the board that there wasn't support from that article um uh, we pull that back and we're able to identify within existing appropriations granted in other departments and other line items uh how we're able to make up that difference mm -hmm. um so uh i don't believe that there is any impact because we would have under that article been hitting free cash any free cash that isn't used come July 1st gets recertified as free cash anyway. So it's sort of the same, the same bucket. There's no um, way to not spend this money. They're paying bills. There's no way to not spend it. It, it, it. There was a mistake made, right? People have acknowledged the mistake. We have to live with the consequences. The consequences are we need to find a way to reconcile the budget. Do what you want. I'm not, I won't go far. I think, I think ultimately, let me let me fast forward. I'll vote for these others. If we could, just let's just fast forward for a minute. I feel like I have a pretty good understanding of this. I would feel much better. I feel both sides of the argument. I think, unfortunately, we're stuck with the bill. And whether we put forward an article for $40,000, whatever that number is, or $54,000 looks like to me, but whether we put that Spend it on free cash. We certainly wouldn't raise it appropriate. We'd spend it on free cash since we have, you know, a couple of million bucks or whatever. Otherwise, let's say we didn't pay it. I think, believe it gets recaptured on July 15th. So you get trust recapture. It goes free to recapture. So you, you spend it there uh, anyways. I think it gets paid either way. I mean, I, I, but having said that, I think we end up at the same place. But I think what I'd like to do is let's vote this Thursday. We've got a couple of hot topics here tonight. We're already past nine o'clock. Let's pick this up Thursday. We got an hour before annual town meeting. Everybody knows what the debate is, and it's not going to be any great suspense. But at least we'll both feel better. All three of us will feel better. We'll vet the question a little bit longer. We'll have an opportunity, hopefully, for you to get us a little more definitive answer from DOR and something KP is always in attendance of our ATM. So we can hopefully get something from that question. So Sir, no, hold on, please. All right. Thank you. Maureen isn't going to vote for the transfer. I will vote so, for. No, I, we know what we're talking about. Okay. Um, what do I want to make sure that come Thursday we can put this to bed because there's going to be a new board member, and the last thing I want for them is to have to try to wrap their head around this. So I want to make sure you have what you need. To, so that we can wrap this up on behalf yes. of the taxpayers and the board members for Thursday, because no matter what we do between now and then, it's not going to, you're saying it's not going to affect the way you vote. Okay, so, so let's see. Yeah, I will be ready to go. Okay. I think that will give me just those last little pieces of the puzzle to make sure that, uh, you know, there's at least I've done my due diligence 100 percent. Yeah, Maureen's raised some great, great uh, issues and concerns. I want to yeah. make sure that I, in my mind, Make sure that I'm comfortable with that. So I would just recommend let's take this whole table. Yep. We'll give us some extra additional time. And on Thursday, okay. we'll address. Sounds good. Uh, Sounds good. Great. Okay. Mr. Clarity, go ahead. Not as simple as that, fellas and girls. This requires the concurrence of the finance committee first. As one, it requires the board of selectmen and the concurrence of the finance committee. Okay. 
So what is finance, that? I don't know what that. Means. They have to vote. We have to vote on it too. And if the finance committee says no, it's all happening. So for okay. the, for the transfer. Yeah. Okay. Well, you guys, you, that's your thing. So you. No, guys, no, it isn't because if both boards don't vote in the affirmative, it doesn't happen. Right. So we're going to vote first. You guys can vote however you want. We don't control. Okay. We don't control the finance committee. A FinCom usually you typically call the meeting to order at least 30 minutes or an hour before ATM, and we will be in session. Oh, we're not having this debate with FinCom. No, no, no. At separate ventures. They can do what they want. Yeah, they yeah. do what they want. We're going to vote Thursday. We're going to vote Thursday. We're going to vote Thursday. We're we'll ready to go. Yeah. What you don't. Okay. Yeah. Excuse and it's irregardless. Paul saying. Yeah, I was just going to say we're important. posted at 630, so we'll have to. We're posted at 6 because we have an issue to the table. Yes. Yeah, we, I mean, I don't think the, the intent will be that this will not take the board long because you'll have all the information you need beforehand and you'll come ready to vote. Prepared. Prepared. So it'll take us two minutes. Yes. I, okay. I would like so, to take a vote that we have the DOR give a legal opinion on the general law and excess uh, expenditures and excess of appropriate. So are you making a motion? Yes. Okay. What's your motion? I move that we ask the DOI to give a written opinion of a pro, uh, expenses and exa, excess of appropriation and what the law means. Do you want a written one or do you want a just word one? Well, hold on. You made a motion. Okay. Hearing a lot of silence. I cannot second that motion the way you've drafted it. That's that's a little too in, in depth for what I'm looking for. I am looking for if Joe has reached out to DOR and really I feel like if KP can give us, you know, I'm going to draft a question. When we are out of session, I'll draft a question and hopefully between now and Thursday, KP can answer the question. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll also be simple question at the session. Mm -hmm. my, my inclination is we're going to pay this one way or the other. You gotta uh, pay. I just want to make sure that I understand the ramifications. If there's something I'm missing, I just want to make sure I understand what I'm missing. You know, whether we paid it via a warrant article, whether we pay it via a transfer, yeah. or whether we don't authorize this and it gets picked up, you know, July 15th on our recap sheet. So I think ultimately, I believe we're going to pay it. Right. I don't see any way around that. One way or another. I would agree. Yes. I'd rather do it the correct way. In your opinion. That is my opinion. That's okay. Way. Very good. So we are good to go. We'll put this on the agenda for Thursday. Yep. And we will vote Thursday. Do you have any other questions or comments? Yeah. Um, I I want you to understand. I have the same question, Mr. Porter. You should wait. Thank you. You have other I questions? Will, I like to say the opinion as well. Okay. Because if the finance committee votes no, okay, this transfer doesn't. Right. Both have to be voted in the affirmative. I understand. Okay. Right. I'm just, I'm just pointing out that this is. We could vote yes. You could vote no. It won't get paid. That's right. Okay. Uh, uh, no, it's been paid. That's the problem. It's been paid. That's the that's the crux of the issue. That it has been paid. If you but if you reach so it, Paul, what do you want to happen? I want to just you want to have a special town meeting? No. You want to put it in the fall? Like what? How do we solve the problem, guys? We're here. I we're in reality, I, not in fantasy. I want what somebody, do you want to do? I want somebody who has more knowledge about this process than the six of us sitting in this room. To say it's okay to do it. And we understand his, it's simple. We committed the sin. We're asking for forgiveness. Okay? Uh, I mean, I think that's the, kind of what we did. Yeah, specifically, <laughs> that is. It's, it's been done. Specifically, that's the exact question <laughs> that I. Okay, that's fine. Specifically, that is the exact question that I asked of DOR. And and what I, what I had read was, or what I had asked, was um if you could share the question joe because i don't want us to be redundant yeah. and all of us fire off the questions we're slightly different yeah. joe's asked the question 
and we can get that answer by Thursday. I think he has an answer. He's can you to us? Can you let me know if you are satisfied with our plan to address the expense line deficit through our year end transfers? Uh, as maybe you can appreciate, this past year has been quite an adjustment for the town on many fronts, and our board of selectmen want to make sure, in the opinion of DOR, that the correction is uh, that the correction is to address it as Kenny and I had laid out. That's what I asked her to to provide. And with an the legal authority. I'll reiterate that those are two different things. One is seeking legal authorization up front, and then one is to correct what happened. That's what we're dealing with now. If this is a no, it doesn't mean this is not a valid um, course of action. It's the only one that we have available within this fiscal year of what's remaining. Mm -hmm. Okay, other questions, comments? That's what I've been asking for right along, just to get the written opinion from the DOR, get a slap on the wrist and be done with it. Okay. We didn't do that. Any other questions, comments? I'm good. I'm good. All right. Just, what? Just oh, to, hold on. You do have additional questions or comments. Go ahead. No, the floor is yours, sir. If this bank process can work, because we're both, the finance committee posted at 6 o'clock to talk to the um, issue about the Orange Street Book Bridge. And uh, I'd like to have this and have hopefully this time that Joe can explain this to the rest of the members of the board. Um, of oh, the Finance Committee? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I fully understand this whole thing. But my guess is there probably won't be time to do that between 6 and 6 30 on Thursday. Do you think a half an hour will suffice? It's pretty you might have to move your meeting. You might, I guess you might have to move your meeting to early so that you have enough time to answer. I can't leave the meeting to early. It's oh. already been posted. Gotcha. Because I mean, it's taken us almost an hour to talk about this. So all, I don't all, think you want to shortchange your committee members. Be resolved. Okay. Okay. And if we can, I just want to have Joe. And you know, present it as best he can. I can, I can probably do it. Okay, I understand. I've been involved. I've been involved with these discussions with Joe for months here before that about this means. Because our meeting's posted for six thirty. Six thirty. They're right. posted at six. Yeah. I discuss it with them first. Yeah. Should easily be able to be done in 15, 20 minutes, so that then can go through the exact same thing. Yeah. Okay. We're, we're, right. we're upstairs in the room. Or where we normally are, right mm -hmm. in our own stage. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Great. Any other questions or comments? I'm, I'm not trying to be contrary. Okay. I, no, we're working it out. We're, we're, I'm here. We're working it out. I'm trying to, trying to work with everybody. Did you just whisper to me? Yeah, go ahead. Contrary. <laughs> yeah, <Mary. laughs> I just want to sleep there. Come on. Better hope that our town moderator takes a long time to warm up the crowd. In case we run late or in case FinCom runs late. There you go. I think we'll, we're going we're gonna to be speedy, but I can't speak for my colleagues. It'll be pretty expedited. All right. Okay. Good deal. So we'll move this till Thursday, 630. So that'll, that'll be great. Um, then we have, I have a motion around the town manager annual evaluation, which is a what we talked about in executive session. So I'm going to do my best here. I move that the board approve a performance based merit increase for town manager Joe Layden in accordance with the town manager employment contract section 5B. I didn't say what it was. No, that's in the executive session and meeting minutes. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries by unanimous action. Thank you. And we have minutes from April 4th and 18th. I'm also. I did not have a chance to go over the minutes. All right. We will hunt the minute approval. 
Okay, but you can't. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're not going to approve them. Have we wanted done? I mean, we could do, we could do we could do majority action approval of the minutes. We could do that, or we could approve them Thursday. But why don't you? you well, we can do that. Yeah, let's do that. We don't need that. That could be. No, it's still we'll have two issues. items on the agenda. Technically, um, it's not. Um, but um, one of the oh, things, like and, and I I always find this. Well, um, and the other thing isn't either. Oh, so. <laughs> Technically, both could because we have other issues that don't uh, come up. Um, expectation of the board meeting minutes, though, is the administrative function. So yeah. that's where I say that would be hard to sort of push through. Um, uh, just want to remind because very often very boards try to rush through meeting minutes because they say, well, we have a new member coming on the next meeting. They can't participate. New members can participate because meeting minutes are to form. It's not on content. So any member who was not present for a meeting can still vote to approve meeting minutes because they're not approving the content. They're approving the the um, context and the document itself. So if that was the reason to sort of hold off to the next meeting, yeah. While anyone can abstain, the abs abstention isn't because they weren't at the meeting, um, but. If you have to, um, so we can do them on Thursday or we can't do them on Thursday? Because it's administrative and to say that it's something that is not reasonably expected, that's where I just would sort of draw the line. This is something, the other topic is something that we can is, reasonably expect that we're going to have to approve meeting minutes. Yes. So, yeah, do you yeah. Want to just, why don't you just approve them? I mean, if they look good. Do you want to go and do that? Yeah, I, I have a chance to read them, so I'll just abstain. Okay. okay. I think uh, <laughs> uh, uh, anybody wants five more minutes of this meeting. And, yeah, I was going to say, I'm going to scan them. I can, but I can't. Uh, May, April 4th and 18th. Unfortunately, I did not May, see them. May 4th. Yeah, read right there. April. I'll change the date. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to approve the right time. April 4th and 18th. Yeah, they usually I move to approve the regular meeting uh, set. Regular session meeting minutes of April 4th and 18th, 2023. I second the motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Abstain. Motion carries by majority action. Okay. I will take a motion to adjourn the meeting. I move that we adjourn the May 2nd, 2023 meeting at 9 12. 9.32. Oh, 932. Jeez, I got my glasses. Uh, I was it's saying. not even a seven. All those in favor, aye. aye. <laughs> Motion carries by unanimous action.